Hey guys, in this week's episode, we look at all the information from our recent vlog and we crunch those numbers. We look at our stock availability, what suits us and all the inclusions and hopefully we come up with a new motorhome. Time to jump on board. Welcome back to RV Travelling Husbands. I'm Scott, and before we get into this video today, you can see our previous vlog with this link. Right now, it was bound to happen, but looking at this graphic, you will notice that there's been some price increases, notably with the Avan and the Sunliner. We've put together a list of needs and wants, and we'll use this to reduce the group down. Starting with both of the Avan Ovation models, the M3 and the M2.9, they're both similar with the same length, carrying ability, and huge amount of cubby holes and storage niches. But they have one of the smallest bathrooms in this group. It comes down to all the details. The M2.9 loss of that extra seating around the dinette even with a more useful straight bench in the kitchen, the relocated oven for us is just cramped. Whereas in the M3, it, the oven is nearer to the door. It's far easier to access. The 2.9 feels smaller than the 3 and it's definitely down to this layout. But that's enough to prefer one over the other. So the 2.9 ovation is crossed off our list. Now looking at the Jayco's, the 25 foot and the 24 foot, range comprises of up to five models. Now the Jayco's are well specified for their price and it's the 25 foot range that we find our preferred layout with having the rear dry bathroom. But at eight meters long, it just won't fit behind our gates without some serious changes. So do we compromise on layout for length? Both of the 24 foot models are slightly shorter at seven and a half meters. Both seem to have identical layouts, but their bathrooms differ greatly. The Fiat base model has a fold down hand basin with an overhead shaving cabinet with a storage with no real vanity and you end up straddling the toilet to wash your hands. The Mercedes base model has a bathroom similar in size and layout to our Daintree. Plus it has the capability of rear wheel drive. So it's for this reason that we solely focused on the MS24 4 but we're not a fan of its overall layout with the rear club lounge and electric bed not being our preference. And when you shut that bathroom door, the space is no better than what we had in Harvey. And why does the MS lose its windows in the Luton compared to the FA model? And talking about those Lutons, a common feature of all these Conquest models is the narrow access to that Luton, which for us, we think is a negative. It's confined, it makes the Luton area feel claustrophobic, and the Jayco wood grain is everywhere. None of them felt right, and with the Mercedes chassis being quoted as one of the longest wait times of up to 12 to 18 months, this was enough reason for us in one foul swoop to remove all of the Jaycos from contention. Compared to the group of RVs in this lineup, the Sunliner has a smaller four seat diner area, which does include the swiveling cab seats, and the kitchen is small, but it has an extra bench top extension. It has a smaller grey water tank and two LPG bottles, but they're only four kilo compared to the nine kilo bottles in the competition. But it does score extra points with a permanent bed and a more spacious ensuite with niches and lots of storage. So our list has suddenly been reduced to two models, the 6.96 meter long Avan M3 and the 7.1 meter long Sunliner S442. Using the Fiat chassis as a base for both models, there's around a $12,000 advantage to the Ovation. So let's spell out some of those pros and cons. Now the Avan, its pros is that it feels bigger than it is. It has a comfy six seater dinette with plenty of storage with cupboards, niches and cubby holes. And it has that huge outside storage area and a lower base price. But its cons are its wood grain, we're not a fan. The awkward bathroom, the weird shaped bed with access from only one side, the cassette awning and the TV placement. Whereas with the Sunliner, the pros are that 
that it's slightly longer. It has a more spacious rear situated dry ensuite. It has also storage with niches and cupboards, a full size bed with access on both sides and a variety of chassis are available with a more robust awning. Its cons are that it has a cramped four seat dinette, a smaller kitchen with only two four kilo LPG bottles and a smaller grey water tank. So now it's time to actually head down the path of getting some trading prices and talking figures with the dealers. The Avan salesman was a tad pushy and even though there was a savings to be had, his trading offer for Harvey was much less than our lowest guess, which meant there was a bigger out of pocket changeover than we'd actually hoped for. The salesman was sticking to his figures, so we decided to walk off and go and think about it, but he was so sure of his product and his offer, he thought we'd be back. So we made our way over to the Sunliner dealer where they've answered more of our questions and ran through some options. With the VW Synchro chassis not currently engineered to suit the S442's swiveling cab seat requirements, the ability to drive all four wheels won't be available to us. The available chassis include the Iveco Daily, the Fiat Ducato, the Ford Transit, the L and the LDV Deliver 9. Each chassis cost varies and the wait times differ greatly due to their popularity, their production and their availability. The longest being the Iveco with two years, 12 to 18 months on the Fiat, eight months for the Ford and three to six months for the LDV. The LDV is the first to go as it's an unknown and we don't want to chance it. We know that the Fiat cab uses the Alco chassis and all these manufacturers take advantage of that and that's a positive. Our Windsor members who own Flinders and Simpsons swear by their Fiats and we've heard positive things about its transmission and its abilities. Though they're not infallible and we think that trying to pull a motorhome with a GVM of four and a half tons via the front wheels is a concern for us. We're not really prepared to wait for an Iveco. And with the Iveco and the LDV now removed from contention, it leaves only the Ford and the Fiat to choose from, with the Ford having a time advantage. Looking at more figures, I've thrown together a comparison of both chassis and cabin comfort specifications. You can see they are similar but with the overall Ford edges forward with more safety features, more inclusions and warranty. After looking over Harvey and getting back some figures, Melbourne RV offered us a more generous trade-in, leaving an acceptable changeover figure too. It wasn't a hard decision in the end. So with a habitat that felt right, a promise of this one of the shortest wait times and better cab specifications and a manageable changeover, it's ticking a lot of boxes. So our new motorhome choice is a Sunliner Switch S442 on a Ford Transit. We've added the optional factory diesel heater and we've upgraded to lithium house batteries. With little touches like padded, lots of padded surfaces, nicer fabrics, more standard inclusions and a muted modern palette, it has a feel. It feels well built and dare we say, luxurious. The S442 has storage, it meets a lot of our objectives and it feels like it's just the right size. So there you have it. So what did you think? How about leaving some comments down below and like and subscribe if you wanna see more content from us, especially once we're out on the road. So until next time, we'll see you out on the road. Bye.